Hi, I'm Claire Rowley. Thanksgiving is just around the corner, and I'm going to show you how to make something that only you have on this Thanksgiving table. We're going to use some black gabardine fabric and some Thanksgiving themed fabric and make a custom napkin using these really odd shaped hoops. Now we're going to choose what elements in the fabric you like. And I'm going to cut right around this leaf and the pumpkin and leave this little brown here and, and that'll be it. There we have it. A little applique to add to your napkin. Cut an 18 inch square of the gabardine fabric. We use gabardine because it looks the same on the front as it does on the back. To finish the edge, we're going to sew a fluffy, soft yarn right on the edge of the napkin. Isn't that great? Take your applique and start thinking about where you might want to place it on your napkin. I want to make it secure to the fabric, so I'm going to use this little board here to prevent me from getting glue on the actual napkin. This is a great tool that I like to use. It's a scrapbook and glue. Kind of dab it on to the back of whatever fabric I want to sew down. And then I can actually spread it out with my finger like this. So now we're going to think about where you want to place it on the napkin. Ever so lightly brush against the surface and you're only about 10 minutes away of making this a permanent applique on your napkin. This OctiHoop kit comes with a stabilizer. It's called Fabric Stick and Rinse, and it's really neat because it has a, it's a sticker that has a release liner. And I'm gonna use this size frame here because I think it'll be perfect for the pumpkin to fit into. And this is gonna allow us to embroider using my regular sewing machine. Draw lines around the hoop frame so you don't waste any of the stabilizer. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this to fit. Once you have cut it, you're ready to peel off the release liner that is on the shiny side, the stabilizer. And now we're ready to adhere this to the back of this frame. And we're able to stretch it until it's really tight and it sounds like a drum. And then you're able to just Lay your area out right over that adhesive. And now we're ready to start embroidering. On these octahoops, what's really cool is we're not going to use a foot at all. So we just go ahead and remove it. And then this hoop allows you to put this handle inside the hole and to just draw. You drop the foot even though there isn't a foot because otherwise the tension discs are not closed and you'll have zero tension and make big knots on the back. And then we're just going to start coloring and then see how I'm just kind of drawing. Following this line. So basically you just outline the outer edges of the design that you have on here. And we're just using a straight stitch. I'm using red as the outline right here, but I think I'm gonna change my color to a light orange color on this area right here. I can spin the hoop around in any direction. Uh, since I can't really see where I'm going here, I'm gonna drop the handle into the hole and hold it. And now my arm's down, and it, if your hand's down, I find it's much easier to control. So now I'm on an area where I'm ready to switch to orange, but I think I'm going to go in to the leaf a little bit and add touches of thread. Because now it's not fabric, now it's embroidery combined with fabric. Now I'm going to choose a new color. Now I have the freedom to just kind of swirl out like that. Taking it from being a fabric to being actual embroidery. I 
think it's time to change to another color. You see how I have added the, the thread but left some of the fabric. It adds real nice texture and, and uh, makes it so you don't have to completely cover it in. I think it's easier on the, on the fabric since the fabric is lightweight. Now we're ready to go in with some metallic thread. Metallics can be challenging for people. I find that it's best to use it on a thread stand separate from the sewing machine. I'm going to put it down like this. This stand has an eye hook for us to then take it to the sewing machine. See how it's kinking? We we'll just take that thread and put it over this post and now it straightens that out. And we want to use a lighter tension and a larger needle. It's a 9014 universal needle. As it is a light ball point and will protect your fabric from shredding. switch to this color and because we don't have any of the really light color in there. Always cut your thread so it doesn't distract you. So now I'm just doing some highlights of yellow because I think too much of this will take away from the overall design. I'm just going to do a little bit. Continue changing thread color as you cover up the fabric and color in the areas that that color is present in. Make sure that you tie the colors in on all sides or in each area so that you don't end up with only orange over here and none right over in this area. It'll, it'll show. You're gonna feel like you've done a work of art, so you might even feel like writing your name or autographing your work. When you have that much control, you may as well. Now on the stems, it's very small. If we were to try using any other applique technique, that stem would certainly disappear from the zigzag stitch width that would normally cover it up. How nicely that locks that down without having to worry about losing all the green fabric. There we have this beautiful embroidery done with your regular sewing machine. Cut off any tails or any connecting stitches. And then you just pull towards the embroidery and it starts to tear the stabilizer underneath. It would be a good idea for you to rinse this away and before Thanksgiving. But you can see that's all that's remaining and when you're finished there won't be anything, any stabilizer at all, it'll just be the embroidery. Now I'm going to put this nice fluffy chenille yarn through that opening right there. Take a piece of thread and lay it across your machine and then lay the yarn over it. Take the two ends of the thread and bring them together. And then cut your threads evenly. 
Now all we have to be concerned with is inserting the ends of those threads through the hole. And this is the sequins and ribbon foot. Wrap the threads around your finger and then pull through. Now we don't want to waste all that yarn, so just keep pulling it back. And we want to make sure there's still th yarn underneath the foot. Reattach your machines, snap on adapter, or attach the foot however it is supposed to be attached to your particular sewing machine. And now I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to secure that yarn right on the edge of this raw edge of napkin. You, and I think it's going to be stunning. I just make sure that the fabric's edge and the yarn are lining up with each other. And since this is a thick yarn, I can use a longer stitch length than I normally would do. So this is almost completed in and it's going to be nice and soft and very unusual for your dinner table. On a corner you just stop with the needle up and then you just lift and turn. You have this perfect corner. I cross over the end where you started and then do a straight stitch. And then we're going to hit reverse. Go back over it, come back, go back over it, and come back. And that should do it to secure the end of that yarn. So now you're ready for your Thanksgiving dinner with your beautiful napkin that you made all by yourself in just minutes.